Yoga is an ancient Indian science which helps to improve physical, mental, social and spiritual well-being. The exercises of yoga triggers the release of feel-good chemical in our brain and helps in mental health. To know more about it, let's have the panel discussion on the topic yoga and mental health. In the panel we also have with us Mr. Cosmin Constantin who has spent 20 years of his life in sports and later became a fitness coach. Then he started teaching hatha yoga classes which changed everything completely. He visited India where he studied intensive courses of ashtanga yoga, pranayama, mantra, meditation, yoga nidra, philosophy and asana with Yogi Sunil Sharma and Yogi Kamal Singh at Tatva Yoga Shala in Rishikesh. Also in India, Rishikesh alongside Swami Narayanananda, Dr. Jose Ruge Ribeiro Jr., Brazil. He also did the course of psychology, yoga, and Ayurveda cosmology in Parmat Niketan Ashram and Anand Lok. In Sudha Sabha Ashram, Brazil, along with Dr. Ruge, he studied Ayurveda, Sudha Raja Yoga, meditation, and scriptures on Sanatan Dharma on yoga line called Sudha Dharma Mandalam. The last four years he began to learn Nidra Yoga, Pranakriya, Mantra Yoga and Yantra Yoga in the tradition of Kashmirian Shamanism along with Andre Rail. Today we also have with us Arjuna Gastav Plaza, a renowned yoga and meditation teacher. He started his yoga path at a very early age and has over 30 years of practice and study of yoga. His sharing and presentation of yoga includes various aspects of the tradition such as Hatha Yoga, Meditation, Pranayam, Philosophy, Yoga Metaphysics and Yoga Nidra. He has participated as a presenter and teacher in international yoga events like Bhakti Feast, Joshua Tree, California, USA, Dakini Festival, Yoga General Conference, Moscow, with a study firm yet humorous and kind teaching style, he shares the wisdom and this ancient tradition with everyone. Our next guest is Kelehana Silve, who is hula artist and choreographer. She always sought to promote Hawaiian culture abroad. She founded the first Hawaiian dance school in France, Halau Hula O Menau, named after the valley in which she was born. After 30 years in Paris, she returned to Hawaii and continues to teach Homana in Alaska and China. Through her classes at Kapiolena Hospital Women's Center and the Salvation Army's Drug Recovery Program, she has become a pioneer in the promising new field of hula for health. She also participated in the annual Talk Story Festival in Honolulu and released a CD of Hawaii Tales, Chants and Music. On behalf of United Consciousness, I welcome our next guest, Mr. Christoph Stey. He is a Polish citizen. He is doctorate in physical education and sports sciences and has been employed as an assistant professor at Jen Dulugos University, Czestochowa in Poland since 2012. Earlier in his life, he worked for 20 years in various states in the United States. In last 15 years, he was in Silicon Valley, where he was employed as a senior software analyst in different companies known worldwide for introducing breakthrough technologies. He has been practicing yoga for about 40 years, as detailed in an interview he gave to Yoga International magazine, published in January 2006 issue. Under the title Yoga Behind the Iron Curtain, he has been to India more than 30 times. He has spent 10 years in India, where there he obtained two academic qualifications, graduating with a diploma in yoga education from Kevala Vyadhama Institute and a master's degree in physical education from the Banaras Hindu University in Varanasi. Today's panel discussion will be moderated by Dr. Vikram Singh Tober. Convenia United Consciousness, Dr. Tomer is an acknowledged trainer, academician, scholar, writer and a management consultant. He is a freelance trainer and served the cabinet ministers of state, MLAs, police MLA's officers police and titles, officers of, the titles of the business world. His aim and objective His is universal objective brotherhood, universal and, brotherhood happiness and happiness through harmonizing the knowledge from the ancient scriptures into our lives. So I welcome all our guests for panel guest discussion. For panel discussion. 
Namaste. Uh, welcome to all the respected guests. We acknowledge your presence, Gustavo ji. We acknowledge your presence, Kosman ji, Kilohana ji, and Christoph ji. Dear friends, we are gathered here to talk about one of the very important topics of in our present times, yoga and mental health. So it, the world today we are living, mental health and issues related to mental health are really the prime concern of the world today. We'll just begin our discussion with Arjuna Gastrava ji. How do we define mental health, Arjuna ji? What is mental health? In your definition, how do you define it? Namaste. Namaste to all. Uh, dear Dr. Obikant, thank you so much for this invitation and this participation. As you can see, I'm here again in the celebration of the International Yoga Day. Many students yoga out behind me practicing yoga and searching for this physical and also mental health. Uh, for me, within the the traditions of yoga, the traditions of meditation, and, and the traditions of the internal knowledge, mental health is a capacity of the mind to see life as it is, not through interpretations, not through filters, not through uh, different ideas, but seeing reality as it is. Many of, many of the times we are suffering, uh, we are complaining, or, or uh, we are whining because we are attached to our ideas of how life is supposed to be. And we don't understand just how life is, where our attachment takes us to the past and takes us to develop depression for not having what we could have, what we had in the past. And in the other side, we have this anxiety for something that is yet to come, that is not here now. So in the philosophy of, of if in Eastern philosophy in general, it is called the say by, by, uh, by Shantideva in Tibetan wisdom. He say, if you have a problem, if problem has a solution, why you worry? If you have a problem and the problem has no solution. Why you worry? There, there's just no need to worry. So for mental health is being able to understand life as it is, being able to see, to accept the mind that the mind is, and just is stabilize the mind and, and see this beautiful flow of life. You know, mind can become. It's said in the Bhagavad Gita, mind can can be our best friend or can be a worst enemy. So mind is just an instrument, not, not to be controlled, not, 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 but not to, not to be, what I say is if the mind is controlling us and we are not controlling the mind, the mind becomes, you know, the, the boss. We don't want the mind to be the boss. We, the mind is a good servant. So just have the mind as a good servant. Thank you. Thank you. So Arjuna ji mentioned that mental health means seeing things as they are rather than seeing things as we are. So what's your take, Ilohana ji? How do you see what is mental health? Aloha. And thank Aloha. you for including me in this panel on this very important subject. I believe that through the... Um, philosophy of the Hawaiians and the practice of hula, we come to um, a very similar conclusion about mental health. There's a word that we use as a greeting often in Hawaii, the word aloha, but if you analyze the meaning of the word, if you take it apart, alo is to be present and ka is to be. And so if you are truly present, in your, your breath, in the present moment, then that's a tremendous help to being in touch with reality, to being truly in the present moment, in your total being, in harmony with nature. And like yoga, hula seeks to 
share this connection that we all innately have within each of us. We are nature. We are a part of nature. There's mm -hmm. nation. And if we truly feel that, then we are in harmony with our surroundings. And mental health is not a problem. Okay. So Kilohana Ji mentioned that to be in the present moment, to be with the breath in present is aloha. But it is, a, it is easier said than done for the world today. So let me come to Christoph Ji. Majority of the worries or the problems, as Arjuna Ji said, they are connected with either worries for future or anxiety for future or some regret for what has happened in past. So Christoph Ji, how to deal with this? Because mind goes in like a pendulum, past and future, past and future. How to remain in present? It is easy to say than to do. What's your take, Christoph Ji? Uh, please unmute and speak, Christoph Ji. All right. Now you can hear me. Yep, yep, yep. Um, so I think perfect answer uh, to your question uh, provides yoga. Uh, it is a full set of all the tools, methods, techniques uh, that you can use uh, using yogic curriculum. Um, there are many, many ways of handling your uh, mental health and uh, we never should forget that the physical body also participates in that so the way how Patanjali looks at a human being is that to have the integrated look psychosomatic psychosomatic approach to dealing with uh, mental health of course the ruling factor is uh, our mind uh, consists of many, many different aspects. I don't believe we have time to go into that. Uh, but starting properly at the somatic level, uh, it is very, very important. And I like to uh, lecture and talk about these things using uh, verbiage like optimal peak performance. Optimal peak performance it can happen when all these different parts of our personality are functioning in a homeostasis in a very balanced way. Yoga is a mastermind of uh, all these approaches. And uh, to start with, I like to speak about proper ultimate diet, what I call, and also the aspect of Ashtanga Kriyas, which allow to reach the level where the mental state is at the highest peak of performance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, Christoph G, uh, we understood uh, you mentioned about optimal peak performance, importance of diet in keeping mind peaceful at the moment. Kosmanji would like to ask from you, continuing the same stream of thought, in today's generation, the big problem of mental health is connected with the issues about the future, worries of future. So what will you, how do you approach towards it? There are some youth they are concerned about their career and they worry. There is lots of peer pressure. What will you suggest them? Why not to worry them? Hello, everyone. Um, in my opinion, the, the issue with the, the young generation is that it's overstimulated. Uh, overstimulation uh, is uh, depleting in Ayurveda. We have a uh, uh, 
so called ojas, and the ojas is not only physical ojas, it's mental ojas. But uh, to go beyond this uh, things and words, uh, the ojas is the capacity of the mind of adapting, of taking care of the of the body, of the sensations, of the emotions, of the feelings. If I may request guests who are not speaking to switch off the mic, some dissonance is there. Uh, respected guests who are not yes thank you very much carry on kasminji yeah so the this this, me, this mental stability this mental health uh, uh, in ayurveda we can find a lot of yoga is talking about more philosophic for philosophical but ayurveda is more practical in this uh, area of uh, mental health so mm -hmm. the ayurveda is talking about the ojas the mental ojas which mm -hmm. is the the capacity of uh, a person of the mind of that person to perceive to adapt to digest the emotions the feelings and everything that is a steam uh, a stimulus a stimulus that is going through the the, uh, the five senses so um the problem with the youth and the the the, the this generation is that this mental stability is very uh very light it's um uh because of the overstimulation so what we can do um practically we have to choose a way of um, not getting attached too much not getting involved too much in this uh, outside stimulus we have to uh, find a balance between the social life which is very important we have to find a balance in the diet which is also very important and uh, we have to find a balance between the inner world and outside world because if you go too much outside with the senses and we are overstimulated through the outside uh, stimulus we forget about where is built this mental ojas and where is the place where this mental ojas uh, digesting all this outside information so uh, yes okay. uh, thank you thank you kosmanji mentioned about to be specific about the stimulus that you receive and it should be balanced arjuna ji to connect with what you said earlier and in line with what kosmanji also mentioned you said seeing things as they are. So how does it mean? What does it mean to a common person? When I say see things, like for example, if I have, a, I have a financial problem and I have to pay many bills, how, how should I see things as they are and not as I am? Can you elaborate upon it with taking a small, this kind of practical example? What does it mean seeing things as it is? And how will it reduce mental stress? Uh, please unmute and speak. So most of the times we don't see, we don't, ac we don't, we don't, we do not want to accept reality as it is. We want to see based on fantasy. We want, we want to be based on on ideas, and we want we want to be based on myths. You know, that's why in the wisdom of Buddhism, it is so, so much important, uh, this path of the Four Noble Truths. And the, fir the first, the first uh, Noble Truth is acknowledging that in life there is suffering, the reality of suffering. So there are many things, you know, in life in general that happens to us that we, we don't want to, to experience. You know, let's go for one one very s simple one. You're talking about uh, paying bills, taxes. That's easy. Let's talk about something diff the more difficult that is death. You know, when 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 we don't accept death, we are we also deny we also deny our right to live. We're also denying the happiness of living if we are afraid of death. We are afraid of life. If we understand life as it is, first we understand that there's never death. Even in the physical, if we are able to see things as they are, even in the physical plane, death never happens. In turn, this material thing that is apparently dying is never dying, it's just transforming. 
the physical form is just transforming, transforming again in the different elements, transforming again in the earth, being part of earth. So the one of the main uh, ideas of being able to see reality as it is, we tend to see reality as disconnected. We believe that there's the such thing as, as independence. You know, like you live there, I live here. But we forget that we are all interconnected. We are always interconnected. That's why in the wisdom of the East, in all the traditions of meditations, and we have to understand that yoga is a tradition of meditation. Yoga, have never, it was never meant to be yoga for well-being. It's not, it's not about wellness. It's about moksha. Yoga is about moksha. It's about obtaining liberation. And obtaining liberation from our basic suffering of seeing this uh, disconnected life. That's also why yoga is called union. Mm -hmm. there's, there's no separation. If, if I ask this question, does a mountain exist? People will, some people will say yes. Why a mountain exists? And what is a mountain? It's just an extension of the earth. So the, mount, the mountain does not exist by itself. The earth does not exist by itself. We don't exist by itself. We are all interconnected. So if we start seeing things as they are, we start seeing all interconnected. If you have bills to pay, if you have bills to pay, it's your responsibility. If the, the, in res, uh, the word responsibility, the ability to respond. That's, a, that's the etymology of the word responsibility, the ability to respond. So this is a situation in life. You were, you have been doing this and you have been doing that. Now you have to face your bills. And with honesty, with a clear mind, you have to find a way to go out, not to go out from there, but to pay your bills, to find a way to negotiate, to talk. You know, it, it, we cannot be general in this sense. To each situation, we have to observe each Thank situation. You. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Arjuna ji mentioned that take responsibility accept things because whatever you resist shall persist and it's a situation not a problem so don't call it as a problem it's a situation to be dealt with thank you very much so kilohana ji you mentioned about being in the present aloha now there are so much so many worries how can i be in the present like for example i need to study right now and recently i had a breakup so I'm thinking about those memories, lovely memories with my beloved. How can I be in the present moment? And it is creating mental issues for me. I need to study right now, but my mind is haunting me with the beautiful memories I had with her. How can I be in present moment? I'm still thinking about the notion of responsibility that was just so beautifully. And with that notion of responsibility that the Hawaiians call kuleana, it's this interconnection. We, we, we carry responsibility because we're a part of the whole. And this leads to the importance of protocol, of asking for permission that exists in, in hula, in Hawaiian philosophy, where we're all interconnected and we're part of the universe. We're part of nature. There's no separation, in fact. And so in hula training, if you're going to weave or sew a lei to wear, before you even begin, you ask permission of the plant before taking the ferns or the leaves or the flowers and i think of what you what you brought up this this relationship um, that is no longer in one's life it somehow is where the connection through love is always there the person may not be physically with us in the present moment but Aloha Paole. Love never dies and always with us. So beautifully she mentioned that if it is true love, then it will be always there with us. And if it is not with us, 
then probably you may need to doubt the intensity and the reality of feeling that you call love. Thank you very much, Kilohana Ji. And when you feel loved, you feel complete. When you feel lack of love, you feel incomplete, insufficiency. And that insufficiency leads not to do be optimal and peak in our performance. Christoph Ji, you mentioned about getting optimal peak performance. But I am really suffering from some mental issues. I'm not talking about specific medical mental issues. I'm talking about general mental issues for some or the other reason. How can I do my peak performance when I'm not any tips for that? You know, um, I have um, studied uh, profoundly one of the most ancient techniques of uh, psychosomatic techniques uh, known under the name of Surya Namaskar. And uh, I have developed a very high intensity version of that. Uh, just to say how intense it is, is sufficient to mention that in half an hour I may lose one kg body weight um, and if I go for a thousand eight that would be over uh, four kg body weight I can I found it that the intensity of such practice naturally will keep away uh, all other things because you will not be able to perform at uh, uh, that level so um, you know uh, emotions because you're talking about emotions they are um, very much overwhelming our minds however I found that if you include your body and your mind are, is fully focused on the here and now, then the this is possibly the best way of handling this kind of emotional trauma you are mentioning. Uh, I have been through a partition with my ex-wife. It has taken a very long time it happened in california some time ago and i found that that practice the intensity of that practice it, you can choose any practice any ritual but if you do something every day and a mental condition comes to you then you can relate to that practice and have it performed with your hundred percent on the physical level emotional level and mental level and that way you will be much closer to your optimal peak performance so uh, basically i would suggest just turn to that very ancient cross fitness practice which has so many elements in it is very simple and you just use it as a tool but this is just a sample tool i happen to play with uh, surya namaskar for over 35 years and i understand its values uh, very well so this is my suggestion thank take you. a thank technique you. of that nature thank you very much christoph ji Fosman ji how can i develop my mental health some <laughs> practical executionable tips instead of waiting for mental health to deteriorate and then to start developing how can i start working on my mental health right away what things should I do from tomorrow onwards? Uh, the most important thing I think uh, you, we have to learn to listen to our, uh, our mental health. Because our mental health uh, in the moment that we want to improve it is 
maybe is already altered. So maybe it's in a, it, it is in a, uh, in a, in a point that to recover. So that thing with the uh, uh, with the listening. Uh, sorry, Cosmindi, can others uh, switch off the mic? It will remove the dissonance. Thank you. Yes, carry on. So first, first of all, we have to learn to listen, to listen our inner uh, sensations, our inner feelings, uh, to observe our. Um, uh, interaction with the outside world, with the also uh, inner world, and from there we have to learn to uh, to begin the journey. Um, from the inside, it's a little bit difficult. I think uh, what uh, Dr. Christoph said, maybe the body can be a, a good a good tool, the, the first tool where also Ayurveda is talking about this to learn to to begin with the body. And I think relaxation, listening and relaxation are the two of the best tools which we can use when we are talking about mental health because, you know, uh, nowadays we can find that uh, yoga has become, in my opinion, has become a tool of uh, through which we can hide and, hidden our, our past. So uh, it's... it's 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 not very sincere when you you hidden everything from the past with a new tool which is can be yoga or pills or i don't know a sports or maybe a food or a relationships and so on i think you need a, a moment of 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 listening in silence of what you feel what you digest from the outside from the inside after you have to make a, a, a pact of with the relaxation to find the relaxation in your daily life, like we, we, you can begin with five, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, I don't know, relaxation of the body first time because the body is, is, is the tool which is carrying the, 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 the mental health. And after we can talk about more uh, deeper aspects of, of the practice, uh, Ayurveda is talking about the, 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 the food intake, uh, some some plants, some uh, herbs, but this is only like uh, maximum 10% from what we can do with our attitude of listening and relaxation. But these are interconnected, the listening, the listening of the, of the, of the, of, of what do you feel? What do you really feel before going into, a, into a practice, before going into something new that can take your attention to that tool or practice maybe it's better to go deeper to go beyond to, to go not forward just deeper to go backwards and to to uh, reconnect with uh, what thank was yes, yes thank you kilohana ji some to do tips what can be done from tomorrow itself to rejuvenate the mental health i believe that yoga practice or hula um, daily life. Yeah. Yeah. We but lost your voice in between. We lost your voice in between. Please speak again. I believe that in daily life or hula I'm, I'm afraid uh, your voice is not reaching us, uh, Kilohana ji, for some reason, maybe network. Uh, in one line, if you can repeat again the complete summary of whatever you said in one line. I believe that it's essential to have a discipline in one's life, whether it is yoga or the practice of hula. It grounds us. It connects us to everything around us to nature, to others, to the universe. And it's on our theme of mental health, something that if it could be taught in schools, some meditation or some simple hula movements or breathing 
every day, I think that would be beneficial for all of society. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dear friends, uh, our respected guests from different parts of the world gave us some very practical tools to improve upon our mental health. We discussed in this, uh, Arjuna ji mentioned that mental health is ability to be, to see things as they are without attachment. And a state of mind where when things are there, I am not stressed by their presence and when things are not there, I'm not missing them. Just accepting things as they are, seeing things as they are. Acceptance is a very strong tool in improving the mental health because whatever you resist shall persist. Accept that, yes, there is pain. Accept the pain. Don't deny it. As Buddha said, says Tathata. He also said that ability to respond is called responsibility. Instead of gripping on what has happened, take responsibility in your hands. Call it a situation rather than problem. Because if a problem has a solution, then why worry? And if a problem does not have solution, then also why should you worry? Kilohana ji mentioned the aloha way of living. She said, alo means to be in present. Ha means breath to be with the breath to remain in the present. She mentioned about kolihana means an inner interconnection between everybody of us, me with myself even, asking for permission. As she said that even if you are taking a flower, asking the permission from the plant itself, we all are connected. When we feel connected, we feel loved. And there should be a discipline in life. A disciplined life helps us to be mentally elevated. You can choose any discipline and follow that discipline. Cosmic G mentioned about ojas. That ojas stimulates us and it revitalizes us. He says we are surrounded by lots of stimulus. To be wise in choosing which stimulus to entertain and which not to entertain. He also mentioned about the importance of balanced diet. What you take from mouth, what you listen, what you see, all forms of diet, if they are regulated and right, then certainly you will have better mental health. If you are surrounded by the people who speak ill, then it may go down. Choose which stimulus you want to focus upon. And he also mentioned not only about listening, outside stimulus, listen to yourself also. Self-listening, swadhyaya. Take out time from your life to sit back with yourself. Listen what your heart says. Do some relaxation meditation because yoga is not spiritual escape. It is not running from the routine problems of life. It is facing the brutes head on. Kristanji also mentioned that through Surya Namaskar, we can not only lose physical weight, we can also lose mental weight also. Unnecessary bearings on the mind and body can be reduced by Surya Namaskar which is ex very much executionable tip he gave. He also said that proper diet is very important in generating mental health. He said about Astanga Yoga Kriya, eight limbs of yoga should be practiced step by step that can also contribute in improving our mental health so that we can assure optimal peak performance. Thank you very much, Dear respected guests from different parts of the world, thank you very much, audience, to be here with us. Thank you for blessing us today. Thank you. Namaste.